So now that free agency is over, I wanted to start a series where I give an overview of each team heading into this upcoming season and where I expect them to finish in the standings. Originally, I was planning to talk about all 30 teams in the span of 30 days, but I was a little bit busy, so there will have to be some days where I talk about two teams instead of just one. I'm going to be going in order of worst record to best record based on last season standings, so that means in this first video, I'm going to be talking about the Golden State Warriors. The main thing with the Warriors is that they've been cursed with injuries ever since the start of the 20... I mean, even before the 2019 finals, they they did have some injuries, but it, it was really during that final series where they just got hit with so many injuries and it really messed them up. I mean, even until now, it caused them to have a really bad season last year because obviously KD left and Clay was out the whole year. And I mean, Curry was out the whole year too, pretty much all but like a few games. But it did have their fans thinking that with Curry and Clay coming back from injury and whatever they decide to do with that number two pick, that the Warriors would be competing for a championship yet again in 2021. But unfortunately, that injury curse just hit them again and Clay tore his Achilles during a workout. And now he's going to be missing the whole season yet again. And I think that after that news, people have pretty much ridden them off as a contender, and rightfully so. I mean, there were some people who weren't even 100% sure they'd be a contender this year, even with Clayback. So now that he's out, I think a championship is pretty much out of the equation for them. But they did still make some moves this offseason on top of drafting Wiseman and Nico Mannion, who I thought was a who I thought was a steal to get him where they got him. They also traded a protected first round pick in 2021 to get Kelly Oubre. And they also signed Bazemore and Brad Wanamaker to vet minimums. I think those were solid pickups. But in all honesty, I'm not too sure I like the fit of this team. On paper, their starting lineup is still pretty talented. But my main issue is how Wiggins and Uber are going to fit into the Warriors system. When the Warriors were making the finals every year, their system was predicated on ball movement, player movement, and elite shooting. Neither Wiggins or Ubre are bad passers, and there's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't exactly call Clay an elite playmaker, but the thing with Clay is that he would always make the right pass and the ball wouldn't stick when he got it. When Wiggins and Ubre get the ball, it tends to stick a little bit. And in the case of Ubre, he can get pretty bad tunnel vision at times. There were lots of times in Phoenix last year where Ubre would get a rebound and he'd try to take the ball coast to coast, or when he was in the half court, he'd try to help a defender and he wouldn't be able to recognize the open shooter. In terms of playing off the ball, Ubre has shown some potential as a solid cutter, so I think he can help Golden State if he keeps that up, but I am a little bit worried about Wiggins just because his whole career he seemed to lose interest on offense when he doesn't have the ball in his hands, and that's going to be a problem if that continues in Golden State because at the start of last year when he was playing on Minnesota still, they were using him as a point forward, and yeah, he was playing pretty well, but that's because he was by far the best perimeter player on that team, so they were giving him the ball a lot, right? But in Golden State, Curry, he's going to be the primary ball handler, and there, there's going to be a lot of plays where Draymond has the ball in the high post looking for handoffs and cutters, and they're probably going to run a lot of design post-ups for Wiseman as well, so Wiggins is going to have to learn how to be more engaged when he doesn't have the ball in his hands. I think another really big issue with this team is also the spacing. Obviously, they have Curry, but other than him, there aren't any other above-average shooters on this team other than maybe Damian Lee. They have a few guys that are respectable from three, like Wiggins, Oubre, and Bazemore. Wanamaker also shoots a pretty good percentage, but he only really shoots them when he's wide open, so he's not much of a threat from out there. Other than that, though, there's a glaring lack of spacing on this team. Draymond hasn't shot above 30% from three since the 2015-16 season. And as nice of a rookie season as Eric Pascal had, he only shot 28% from three on two attempts per game. Jordan Poole, who was also a rookie with them last year, he had major efficiency issues last year. And because of that, I don't even think he's going to be in the rotation last or this year. At least he won't be getting many minutes. He only shot 28% from three on five attempts per game last year. Unless James Wiseman comes into the league with a solid three-point shot, this team is... They're going to really struggle at spacing the floor. I'd be interested to see them run some small ball lineups with Draymond at the five. I think you could get by with playing Wiggins at the four just because he's like six, seven, six, eight. There's a lot of fours nowadays that are around that height. And then the rest of the lineup would be Oubre, Damian Lee, and Curry. 
I think Steve Kerr, he's definitely going to have to do a lot of experiment, a lot of experimentation with different lineups this season. Defensively, I think this team can be pretty good. I feel like Wiseman is going to be able to come in and be good in the pick and roll and good at protecting the rim. Jermon's defense has fallen off a little bit these past few years, but he is still a pretty good defender and he's a really good communicator too, which helps a lot on the defensive end. Uber is a pretty underrated defender too. The only thing is that his effort can lag from time to time when he's frustrated. I mean, a lot of that happens a lot with with uh, young players, but he's got to fix that still. Curry's also a decent defender. I feel like he doesn't really get the credit he deserves at times. People often, you know, talk about him as a horrible defender, but he's not bad. And they've also got some solid defenders coming off the bench too. The Wiggins is going to be the big wild card though on defense for this team, just because. He's always had defensive potential. It's just a matter of him buying in on that end. That's going to be a really big thing with the Warriors this year. Sometimes when you're a young player playing for a losing organization, you can develop bad habits. And up to this point in their careers, Ubre and Wiggins, especially Wiggins, they haven't been in winning cultures where they, where they're really held accountable for their mistakes. And there's, you know, a standard of excellence there. So if the winning culture and the standard of excellence in Golden State can really rub off on those guys and the veterans like Draymond and Steph are holding them accountable for their mistakes. I could see a scenario in which those guys are, you know, good, solid team defenders who are also able to buy into Golden State's offensive system. But realistically, though, even if they are like able to fit in on offense and defense, there's still going to be inconsistencies with those guys on both ends. They are both talented young players, so I think they're going to have their moments, but. There's probably going to be some growing pains too, trying to learn that system and everything. The Warriors would definitely benefit from making some mid-season acquisitions for some shooters. I think other than some potential free agent shooters that they could sign, their roster isn't going to change very much. Uber's on the last year of his deal, and if he ends up being a solid fit with Korea, I could see the Warriors looking to re-sign him just because they do have his bird rights now. Wiggins is also on a really big contract, so even if they were looking to trade him, I don't really know if they could get much value in return unless he has a really good season next year. The team definitely has talent, but when you combine their spacing issues, the fit, and the fact that they aren't exactly the deepest team in the league, I got this team going 39-33 and 33 and finishing 9th in the West. I know a lot of people, they're probably going to be upset about that, but putting the Warriors in 9th has more to do with the West being so deep more than anything. Not only are they in the West, but they're also in the toughest division in the NBA, meaning they'll have to play the Lakers, Clippers, and Suns more than anyone else on uh, their schedule. And I mean, the Kings are also in that division too, for what it's worth. But I mean, hey, even if the Warriors finish in ninth, they'd they'd still have a chance to make it into the playoffs with a new play-in format. So you never know. If you're a Warriors fan, I'd mainly be paying attention to how the young guys like Wiseman, Pascal, and uh, Wiggins and Oubre play. Maybe even Puller Mannion if they can get some minutes this upcoming season. If any of those guys play well within the Warriors system, there's a good chance that they have a large role either starting or coming off the bench next year when Clay comes back. Another possibility is that if these guys play well, Golden State could include some of them in a sign-in trade to get another star in uh, next year's stacked free agency class. Because Golden State has Steph, Clay, Wiggins, and Draymond all on big contracts, They'd have to pull off some sort of sign-in trade to get someone, maybe Wiggins, Pascal, Oubre, and some future picks could be enough of a return in exchange for someone. Uh, so if the Warriors could get someone like Giannis or maybe even Kawhi or PG, if one of those guys decides to leave the Clippers, they'd be in a really nice spot going into next year. Uh, best case scenario, Golden State's able to get either Giannis or Kawhi, and they have a starting lineup of Curry, Clay either Giannis or Kawhi, uh, Draymond and Wiseman with a bench filled with some solid vets on the league minimum. Uh, if they got Giannis or Kawhi, they'd be my favorite to come out of the West next year. But even if they got Paul George, I think they'd probably still be equal with the Lakers or any of the other contending teams. But let's just say Giannis resounds with the Bucks and Kawhi and PG stay in LA and they aren't able to get another star. The Warriors would still be really good with Clay coming back. The Warriors, like I said, they have bird rights on Oubre, meaning that they could re-sign him next year if they want to bring him back. Golden State played in a new arena this past season, and they were awful. And now this year with the pandemic, they're either going to have to play with no fans or only limited fans. 
So I could see the Warriors re-signing Oubre even if it puts them deep into the luxury tax because they want to put as good of a team out as possible for their fans and assuming Golden State ends up going down this road, they'd have a starting lineup of Steph, Clay, Draymond, Wiseman, and then either Oubre or Wiggins starting at the three with uh, the other guy coming off the bench likely as this sixth man. Assuming it's Oubre that's coming off the bench just because I feel like Wiggins might get some favorable treatment just because he's on a he's going to be on a much bigger contract and usually when you're paying a guy like close to 30 million dollars you don't want to have him coming off the bench especially after they traded d'angelo for him they 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 kind of want to justify that decision so i could see wiggins starting at the three uh but yeah like i said if it's Ubre coming off the bench the warriors they'd have a pretty deep bench with Ubre. Uh, Damian Lee will still will be under contract, Eric Pascal, probably Kevin Looney, assuming he accepts his player option uh, next offseason, and they could also probably bring in a vet minimum point guard. Maybe if uh, Brad Wanamaker is good, they could bring him back. Uh, assuming Clay isn't a complete shell of himself, I'd have them as a top four seed in the West with a pretty realistic chance of making the finals as long as Steph is playing like a top five player and Clay is at least like... 80% of what he was pre-injury, they'll have a chance to win the West. The Warriors for this season, they're going to be a middle-of-the-pack team this year that either just makes the playoffs or just misses it. As of right now, I have them just missing the playoffs, but I think Clay's going to come back playing at a high level next year and get this team back into title contention.